It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege of interviewing the Amherst Montreal's head swimming and diving coach, Coach Connor Willio. How are you doing today? Doing well, Brandon. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in coaching and college swimming? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely a great place to start. It was not really the plan when I uh, graduated from college. Um, I started working at a law firm and got invited to coach at a club team um, that was actually based out of Yale University. Uh, and so I was just watching the, the college practices every day. And then I coached the, the, the little kid that was having a lot of fun with it. Um, knew that I wanted to give college coaching a try after just getting to know more coaches and calling a lot of people and, and just kind of learning more about the profession. And, um, and that led me to, to find in the job at, at Caltech as an assistant, which was my first, uh, my first collegiate coaching position what was that experience like going to college and getting to play and swimming at Amherst it was great I mean when I was um, in high school a lot of my college search was based around being able to both maximize what I could do academically but also have the, the best swimming experience for myself too um, Amherst felt like the the kind of place where I could be surrounded by people that were motivated to do everything they could in the water and super competitive um, team uh, but also a, a great academic school where I could, uh, you know, really kind of study the way I want. I love the open curriculum here and the opportunities academically. Um, and I just felt like, uh, you know, while I had some opportunities to, to swim in Division One, it was the, the right kind of environment for me to, to be really happy with my experience. While at Amherst, what was that experience like putting on that swim cap for them? A lot of pride, a lot of excitement. Um, you know, I think Swimming is a sport that feels very individual uh, a lot of the time just because it's you and your own lane racing. And so getting to wear a cap where you're kind of representing a team that you have a lot of people that really care about you and that you care about, that was really special. So uh, that first meet, first couple of meets even just, uh, you know, it felt like some of the biggest championship meets, even though I was, you know, it was just regular season and just, just dual meets. While as a collegiate athlete, what were some of your biggest accomplishments on the swim side? Yeah. Um, you know, I think some of the things that I was really proud of, and I had an interesting career in that I got, I got pretty seriously injured in my junior year. So my career was kind of cut short, but, uh, my first two years, um, I finished uh, all NESCAC three times, um, and was able to, to help, help our team beat Williams college in, in two consecutive dual meets, which, which was super fun. Those are some of the best meets and have a lot of respect for that team. So getting to beat them twice in a row as a first year and a sophomore was, was really special. Coming out of college, what was that experience like going to Caltech and becoming an assistant coach? It was great. You know, I think uh, in terms of an introduction to college coaching, it um, especially at an academic institution, that was just really unique and significant to how I have be, kind of grown as a coach since. Um, the students there are really kind of affecting day-to-day -day life in the scientific community as undergraduate students and so helping them grow and build confidence um in the pool you know at that time of their lives was was just really fun and just every practice uh working with head coach jack levitt you know just felt like we got to adapt workouts and be really engaged with what was going on in their students lives and and just really grow as a group and it was just so much fun it just felt like we were always kind of setting a new standard and there weren't expectations um, to perform at a certain level, but there was this, this kind of joy in trying to always get better and grow. What was that experience like going to Connecticut College and becoming their assistant coach? It was great. You know, it was it was, it was definitely a big leap. Uh, coach Mark Benvenuti there is uh, one of my favorite people in the swimming community. He's brilliant, um, really creative and innovative in training and um, really kind of helps his athletes learn how to race, not just how to get fitter, but how to race. And so I was able to take a ton of information from him and just build a really special kind of friendship and connection over how fun it is to build confidence in racing and training. And 
that team that year especially was just really awesome. Our women's team finished top 10 in the country for the first time in Division III. Uh, the men's team set a few NESCAT conference records. Um, so it was just it just felt like like the the fun of it all was just like really built into every single day that we showed up and the, the work wasn't wasn't as much work, but we were really accomplishing things. For you as a coach, what was that taste like going to the division one level and becoming a volunteer assistant at Texas? Yeah, I, it was definitely not the plan. I, I love, I love the division three world. I really respect like what the balance of academics and athletics was. I was really fortunate working from camps down at Texas that um, Carol Capitani, the head coach of the women's team at Texas uh, asked me to stay on as a, as an assistant and it, uh, as a volunteer assistant. And it was, um, you know, it, it was really eye opening just at each point, like just the, the expectations, the level of intention in every workout and, and just the goals that those athletes had and how they balanced the, their schoolwork and their, you know, bigger picture plans um, for their lives too. Um, it was just a really special community. It was an entire athletics department and um, I learned a lot and it offered a lot of perspective on what our sport is, but what sports offer in general. And, you know, and I think that year round approach to swimming too, just, it, it taught me a lot and gave me kind of a lot of lessons, but also a lot of skills in terms of coaching and, and building season planning and programming and, you know, hopefully helping athletes for future generations to come. What was that experience like for you getting that top level experience at Texas being a volunteer assistant? learning just like it felt like every day I was showing up for for a PhD program and and just getting to learn from some of the best seeing you know not just what the sets were and the training was like but the kind of conversations that that Carol um Warwick Fink who's the assistant at the time uh and then obviously on the men's team side with with Eddie and Wyatt just the, the kind of conversations they had with the athletes how they held them accountable the the work that they did on in terms of intentionality around training um, I went to school every single day and I left, you know, two years later from that program, just feeling like, like I had just gotten one of the best education we possibly could have in coaching. How is that transition like going from being a, a volunteer assistant at Texas to coming to Yale and getting to coach in the Ivy League? Yeah, I think that that was really fun. Um, when you think about just like kind of the, I don't want to say the pressure, but the, uh, the level of competitiveness competitiveness at Texas and kind of the expectations around some of those athletes trying to make Olympic teams, national teams to their respective countries. But also when you think about the experience of going to like an academically dominant school or coaching at academically dominant schools like Caltech and Connecticut college, um, you know, Yale is this kind of perfect balance of both where academics are the huge part of going to an Ivy league school and, and, and a primary decision maker for, for students that, um, choosing those schools but also we had you know national level athletes competing for our teams there and and it was you know this I was able to offer experience and kind of uh some of the knowledge but also you know perspective and and relate to our athletes coming from a place like Amherst myself and also get to work alongside coaches that really valued that balance too and and, and learn how they navigated that balance as coaches and as mentors leaders and and um, you know, people that those student athletes really relied on. While at Texas, what was that experience like, as you said, getting to see those future Olympians coming out of Texas? It's special. I, you know, I, when people ask me about that, you know, the, there's the, the, the days where I felt like the things that we were doing in practice were just so unique in terms of how fast people were training and how much intention there were. I also felt like there's a lot of pressure to perform at a really high level and, you know, how we communicated with athletes and, and worked with them around that, that level of pressure was, was really important to, to their trust and confidence growing in themselves. So um, I love that experience for that. And I also think it was um, something that like I had to learn a lot from the coaches I was around. And there's a reason that those coaches are so successful is is a lot because they've they've learned how to manage those communi that that level of communication around pressure expectations the financial side of uh, professional level swimming and and making Olympic teams and and everything like that. During your time at Yale, what was it like getting to compete against the Ivy Leagues like Princeton and Harvard? Awesome! It was so much fun. The Harvard Yale Princeton meet is 
probably one of my two or three favorite dual or, or double dual type meets there there is in this country. I think um, especially when we hosted at Yale, I think my my third year um, on staff and Yale's pool just has this like stadium seating that goes up and up and up all around the pool area. Um, and I mean, what I think is really significant is that there's a, a large number of NCAA championship level athletes on each of those teams. And so the, the meet, the times that we're going in, in this older pool at this like dual meet and the end of January are just incredible. And, uh, you know, it just kind of shows, and we're not even in like our, our tech fast suits where we're just in, in speedos and regular like practice suits. And the teams are just like really getting behind. And there's so many alumni there. Like it's a really special environment of people that are just really passionate about their sport and their communities and their schools all getting to show up for one another. And, um, you know, it, it, it's just, there, there, there are a few meets that I've ever been a part of that are really like the significance of the HYP, um, annual meet that uh that we all showed up for and just it was it was a blast it was a real blast during your time at Yale as the assistant coach what were some of your biggest accomplishments yeah it's an interesting question I don't I don't know if I would call them my accomplishments just because I'm not the one racing um you know I think we had a great staff that really worked together and was really collaborative in terms of how we worked and and even like our head coach Jim Henry um you know, so he kind of gave me charge as the primary coach of, of the sprint group. And, and that group had a decent amount of success. But as much as I was writing workouts and stuff, you know, he was working with me on a regular basis and giving me ideas and input based on his, you know, wealth of experience. And um, but I think some of the things that were really awesome, my, my first year, we had a men's uh, relay that qualified for NCAA championships, which was really awesome. We won two relays at um, Ivy League championships, which they hadn't done in almost or maybe it was over 20 years um for the men's side uh on the the women's women's team side my third year we won a NESCAC relay um which they had done in the in the previous years but we won the 200 free relay and then um Isaac Kenny uh qualified for NCAA championships and the 1500 freestyle ended up getting fifth at at NCAA championships which is just amazing but Again, I mean, the athletes are the ones out there out, out there racing. So all credit to them and trusting the training, trusting the process and, you know, kind of swimming with that intention and purpose and enjoy. How was that experience like for you going to Georgetown College and getting to be the assistant coach there? It was a lot of fun. So the head coach at Georgetown was also the head coach at Caltech years before where I had worked. Um, so Jack Levitt, uh, you know, it was it was uh, it kind of moved that. So my, my wife had gotten an opportunity to work down in DC and we wanted to um, make that work. And Jack was hiring the assistant. So just getting to work with him again was just like this really fortunate, amazing thing. Um, and the the men's team there was coming off their first big East title ever. Um, and, you know, I think uh, one of the things that we talked about a lot, not just between Jack and I, but through the year with the team was, it was a new team trying to win their own championship, not just a back to back. And, we were fortunate to win the women's team set a number of school records and really took a, a huge jump forward. And um, it was so much fun. I love getting to live in DC. That was really special. Um, I love that city and, uh, and, and it's a really just awesome team. I was really fortunate to, to help in any way I could. For you, what was that feeling like getting the call from your alma mater to come back home to become a head coach? <laughs> uh, a lot of emotions, right? Like, uh, you know, I think, when I got into this, uh, into coaching, I always thought it would be a pretty cool thing when the opportunity came up. Um, I definitely couldn't say no. Um, I, you know, thinking back on like when I got the actual call, a lot of goosebumps, a lot of, oh my goodness, am I really going to go do this? And, uh, you know, really kind of just fortunate to be in the position I am and, and trying to do the best I can, work as hard as I can for, for this, for this group. For you, when you came back, what was that feeling like stepping onto that pool deck and getting to experience that as a head coach? Uh, a lot of responsibility. You know, my my predecessor and my coach, Nick Nichols, I mean, he built uh, a legacy here that will never be touched. Um, and I know that and he's just had, he had so much success because he really always prioritized the athletes here. And so, um something that I've learned from a mentor is, you know, especially at this kind of level where the balance between academics and athletics is, is really important that I, I'm more of a steward of this experience and, 
helping them achieve the things that they want to do and, and um, offering them, you know, the insight and experience that I've gained over the years. And I just hope that, uh, you know, I can do that. But walking on the pool deck the first time when I was named the coach, it was actually kind of funny. Um, I, I moved here on a Saturday or Sunday and I, I walked onto the pool deck. I had uh, one of the keys and I set the alarm off and, and um, I had to prove to the, to the um, security guard who I was is so it's kind of uh, um, not glamorous, but it, but it was a pretty funny moment. How is that feeling like taking over from your predecessor and getting to take over the program? Yeah, I mean, again, a lot of responsibility. I have a lot of admir admiration to Nick Nichols. I think the the lesson I was taught and the thing that was uh, advised to me a lot, a lot is just I'm not Nick Nichols and. Nick is is a one of a kind coach. There's a reason he had so much success. So doing my best to take the lessons and and the things that he set up for a long time here, but also be myself and and learning how to do that. I think um, you know I think when you spend a long time as an assistant, you you get really good at being an assistant. And and you know I'd like to think that. And I think figuring out who I am as a head coach and and not trying to just replicate somebody else and making sure it's authentic is is the uh, the really important piece of this. And you know had some great mentors and, and really great people that, that have kind of pointed me in the right direction. And Nick's been, you know, a champion cheerleader in my ear through the whole year. So, uh, you know, looking forward to, to continuing to, to build on everything that he's done and, you know, hoping to, hoping to continue, you know, how special this place is. During your first time taking a step onto that pool deck as a head coach in your first meet, what was that feeling like? I was nervous. Um, I was really nervous. I really just, you know, tried to tell the team like, Hey, like, this is different. Like, this is just going to be different. And, you know, we're turning the page into kind of a new chapter of what this team is. And, you know, everybody on the team last year had been, had been recruited by Nick and, you know, and so they had chosen the school for a lot of the reasons that I had chosen, you know, a decade plus before 15 years before. Um, and, uh, just trying to, you know, be open-minded about where the experience is going to go. And, and, you know, and I think for me, like that was a message to them as much as it was for me and, and just trying to like kind of live through it and, and, you know, kind of grow as the experience kind of unfolded. What does a typical swim meet look like for you as a head coach? Yeah. So home meets are a little bit different just because we're running our scoring system and, and, you know, kind of managing, um, the logistics around the meet as well. Uh, you know, luckily um, last year I had some great assistants who helped out. Um, you know, Kai, our diving coach, would would really just kind of manage that side of it. Uh, um, you know, uh, our Dan did a lot in terms of just like kind of making sure everything ran with our timing system. We would have a meet operator come in. Um, away meets, I, I feel like I really just get to coach and work with the team, and and that's really um, my favorite part of the job is just the you know getting a you know the little pieces that can kill and can help you know get better can you talk about of course the culture that you've started to build for the program you know i think at a place like amherst it really needs to be student driven i mean i think the things that i really care about are, are really just accountability and just making sure we're showing up for one another and so i try to speak that into everything that we do um and uh and that's like that's the biggest thing and i think that's different with every Every team, um, and, and when I say every team, I mean like every year is a new team. We, we, you know, a quarter of our team graduates. We bring in a brand new uh, group of first years, and so just accountability and and you know, and then kind of learning as we get new leaders in different roles too. I mean, last year's captains, um, you know, had to kind of shepherd a, a really new experience for the team, and this year's captains know me much better, and and so like our conversations are different than the roles last year. I think something that that I try to do with, with captaincy and, and leadership is, is really kind of validate and, and empower people for who they are. Um, not this idea of who they need to be. And I think culture is kind of the same way is like, what are the things that we're really good at and how can we just kind of be accountable to the things that we want to keep going through and culture is how we deal with adversity that comes up and we don't know what adversity is going to be until we kind of meet it. And so I'm really proud of this group, how they communicated through adversity last year and, 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 you know, with the changes and everything. And I'm really looking forward to, especially that group, you know, helping me and helping themselves kind of grow through another year. Who are some of the teams in your conference that you compete against? 
Yeah, so I mean, William Williams and Tufts are um, kind of the top dogs uh, right now, and they've just been awesome. I have a lot of respect for Coach Custer and and, um, and Coach Hoyt over at Tufts, and it's and it's funny because like those were both guys that were coaching at those programs when I was a, a recruit once upon a time. Um, so I've known them for for a long time. They've seen me at a lot of different phases of my life, and you know they they've just been so awesome to me. I, I look up to them a lot, as much as you know. It'd be fun to go out and beat them, but, you know, I think something that I really love about this conference and, and getting to compete against schools like that is, you know, we all share this idea of, of what swimming can be relative to academics and identity in terms of growth through through our programs. And so um, learning from them as much as I can through that as well. As an alma mater and head coach, what is that experience like getting to coach against those teams that you competed against, but not just coaching against them, but coaching against the coaches that were there when you played yeah you know it's it's funny um I, I, I get that question all the time I and mean, even just from my classmates from from when I was here uh and I, and I don't know that I, I really have a great answer other than it's just like really fun because I care and I'm passionate about it and um and I and I respect their passion that they bring to their teams and you know, it's, it's fun getting to compete against them. I mean, I think um, I had a conversation with, with the Bates coach last year who was just so kind to me all year. Um, and even just like talking through some different things this summer. Um, but, but he was asking what it was like. And I was like, man, I, I couldn't even put it to words because it is like, it's a different group of people than I swam with. And it's a different, um, you know, like the coaches might be the same, but like, it's all kind of growth and just getting better. And, and so I, I really, like, I think I got better at this through the year last year, but I think one of the things that I'm excited for this year is, is trying to separate myself from, you know, like the, the shoulds of, of how things should go and just, uh, you know, really just trying to help our team be the best that we can at, at the points we need to be great this year. And, and uh, you know, hopefully that means we get some some extra wins. But, you know, at the end of the day, like making sure we just know we we did all the things right along the way. What does that recruitment process look like for those prospective swimmers out there? And as a head coach, what do you look at in those prospective swimmers? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. So the recruitment process is a lot of communication over everything. Um, I really care when I start hearing from people during their junior year and, and not that we're going to be doing a lot of kind of process oriented recruiting at that point. It's really just kind of getting an idea of who people are, where they're at with their training and, and seasons. Um as we get into the summer before their senior year, we, we typically have a pre-read process and then um, people who are in the right range, we bring on to overnight trips and then um, kind of talk through, through those next steps. Um, in terms of what we're looking for, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's multifaceted, right? Um, we want people that can, you know, come in and impact the team, but I also want people that can come in and have a role on the team right away too. I think that that's really important in terms of like seeing themselves grow through the program. Um, you know, and then beyond that, and something that is really important to me is I want them to feel like this is the right environment. I always feel like the balance of academics and athletics is a lot about the kind of people that you're around and the people that advocate for you, the people that you can lean on. Um, if you're getting into a place like Amherst College, that you're, you can do the academic work. If you're on the team, it's because we believe you can do the swimming part of it and the time commitment part of it. But how well you do in those has a lot to do with like your ability or your feeling or sense of safety and security with the people around you. So that's kind of the biggest thing um, as we kind of like figure out who we're recruiting and who we're going to invite into our admissions process is, is a lot um, to do with like, how they fit with our team and, and, and the official visits become a, a big part of that. What is it like getting to see them fall in love with the campus and the swimming pool? I love that part. Um, I remember what it was like for me when I got to do it. And so just like uh, doing that for a place that I still feel that same way when I get to see every day um, is, uh, is really cool. And, and thinking about like last year um, with our recruiting process, like that first time somebody um verbally committed to our missions process and just how excited they were you know I was just I was so happy for them and I was and I was so happy to just be a part of that and just know what that meant in terms of like who they would kind of get to be and that I would get to see them grow through that process more than anything and like the the, the experience 
that they were going to have, but how I got to kind of just, just be a piece of that in, in, in a small way. So as an alma mater and head coach, what is it like seeing the freshman put on that swim cap for the first time and the seniors putting it on for the last? Yeah. Um, so I think for this, the senior side of it, I think that that's really special and significant and it's not even the cap for the last time. It's just that moment that they get to have with their classmates or their teammates right after they finish that last swim. Um, just knowing how much they went through together, not just in the pool, like, but in the library in the late hours after late night practices, walking to the pool early in the morning, um, all those endless hours in our dining hall, uh, you know, just talking about how practice went or just anything else going on in their world, because that's the only downtime they get. Like, knowing that they're rel relishing in that moment after their last swim together is, you know, I, that's a gift as a college coach that um, is hard to put into words. I think first year is putting on that cap. I think it means something different to everybody. You know, I think, you know, we talk about family, like being a family a lot. And, and, and you know, I think that word means something different to everybody. Um, and so I think, you know, people putting on that cap, that means something different to all of them. But I think over the course of their first year, seeing them grow into a part of the team and seeing themselves become, have a role within the team and the growth of the team is, is really special. What is it like for you to get to see those athletes, whether it be going into professional swimming for the national team or getting into college coaching? Yeah, um, so I can't really I, – there aren't many um, swimmers and amers who, who go into professional-level swimming just being uh, – division three school, but knowing that they get to go chase their dreams and in their other fields of work is amazing. Um, and something that I like is really fun as I see them go through internships and things like that. Um, you know, and, and honestly, I, I think like from the coaching side of it in past jobs I've had, I've had a few that have gone into coaching and, you know, they, they're always shocked at like kind of the work that goes into it. And, uh, you know, the, the fun parts of the job, which is being around the, the athletes there, you know, that's, um, you know, they're, they're, that's only a piece of what the, what the job is. And so, um, you know, getting to talk with them through that and just like, you know, some of the tricks, there's, there's one athlete I coached once upon a time who we just worked on head position drills all the time. And she brought that skill to a team that she was working with. And um, just like the kids had so much fun and she, she would, she texted me so excited about it. Like, but, you know, those are moments that are really special and those are moments that are bigger than any of the accomplishments that we had. What are some of your future plans for the Amherst team moving forward? Yeah, I, you know, I think we always want to try and get better. We always want to make sure that we're doing a great job in the classroom, giving space to getting better in the pool, trying to, you know, best school records and, and, and score points. But, um, you know, some of, the, uh, some of the things that I really care about, especially with our program is, um, getting a really strong swim lessons program for our community back on track, um, making sure that that our athletes who are here feel like they're getting this the fully comprehensive experience that so many generations of swimmers have had before. Um, those are the things that that matter most to me. And and yeah, I'd like to get better, but I think I think you know scoring more points at NESCACs or NCAA's or um, you know, any of those accomplishments are usually a product of doing all the other little things right. And so I'm trying to just focus on the little things. What if, what would you tell your younger self looking back on your career now being the head coach at your alma mater? Uh, I wish I had done more journaling. Um, honestly, just, uh, you know, I felt like I've gotten to jump around, you know, different levels and be around just so many different incredible levels of this sport and see so many different things that the perspective I have is not singular by any stretch. Like I think there's, there's a lot of different ways I look at this. And sometimes um, I wish I could go back to different level lessons or things that I was a part of and just kind of glean different information and like get more context for that stuff. So I, I wish I journaled more, especially earlier on. I think when you're really young in coaching, it's uh it, everything's really exciting. You're a sponge. I mean, even between Caltech, Connecticut College, and Texas, especially, like I, my job was to be a sponge and just learn as much as I could. And just being able to take that experience and just be able to read back through it. I, I kept some notes, especially of some of the other like different moments I was a part of, but um, I wish I kept more and, and I wish I could uh, go back to some of those things. And I wish like as I got more 
leadership responsibilities at Yale and, and Georgetown. I had more I could look at that wasn't just sets. Um, you know, those those are really valuable lessons, the experiences with athletes and you know, those relationships guided so much more of the sets than the sets indicate by just reading them back. What advice would you have those coaches out there looking to become assistant coaches and starting their coaching? Uh, yeah, learn from as many different places as you can. Like, I think um, there's a lot of really great information out there. There's a lot of really great experiences. There's a lot of really great, um, you know, kind of mentors. And I think the best way to do it is not you know, authentically, but I think the way to do it authentically is to kind of get more pieces from a lot of different people. And we are inevitably um, made up of all the people and experiences and conversations that we've ever had, not just as people, but as coaches. And so don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to to meet with, you know, some coach that you met at some point or just ask for a phone call. I mean, um, like I always think back, like when I, made the decision to go into college coaching and I was applying for a bunch of jobs. I also called like 20 different coaches that I had met at different points and just like asked for their take on things and their experience getting into coaching. And I got 20 different answers and, um, and it just like, you're, you're able to make, give more context to your own experience. Um, you know, when you're, when you have more to compare it against. What advice would you have those coaches looking to coach at their alma mater like you have? It's a really good question. I think, um, I think it's really hard. I, I mean, and I, I say that as somebody who loves the experience I get to have, but I think the hardest lesson is like separating like what the experience is like when you were a swimmer versus what the experience is like when you're a coach. Um, because I think you're at different phases of your life. I think you're experiencing different things in your life on a day-to-day -day basis. Like the, the, the stresses I had as an athlete had to do with academics and, um, getting papers handed in on time and now I'm you know as a coach trying to figure out how to buy a house and trying to you know and so you're a different person from those times but you're also walking in the same places and and around a lot of the same people and having you know relationships that that matter in very similar ways and so just having understanding and giving a lot of context is just a way that is really I think important to your own growth and development and something that you know we learn how to get better at by navigating and going through it. What advice would you have those future head coaches out there looking to get started in coaching in college as a head coach? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, if they're a head coach of a club program, you know, I think it's it's something that I can't really relate to because I wasn't a head coach of a club program. But I think if you're looking to get into college coaching and you're coming from the club world, um, you know, age group development, you know, I think the biggest thing is like the things that go into being a great club coach, which is relationships and um, technical work and just like really caring about your athletes and having those individual relationships. Those are in some ways harder to navigate sometimes in college, but also easier. And I say harder and easier because harder just they have more things going on and they're older and more mature and have more responsibility in their own lives. And, and you're learning how to help them grow at a point that, you know, is, is really important for them. Um, I also say it's easier because you're around them more and you get to kind of be a part of more parts of their lives. Um, and so my, my experience with that and kind of is just like always be willing to take feedback and learn and listen. And that's the, the best superpower we can have as a coach is, is listen, pause, and then try and figure out what to do next. And, and, you know, I think it's something that again, we get better at, we learn and grow through and just my, my role and responsibility is, is giving my athletes space to say that. And, you know, it's funny, I think back to when I was coaching eight and unders and my athletes are, are way more mature and everything like that. But just when I was coaching eight and unders once upon a time, I used to love when they would come into practice saying, I can't wait to work on this, this drill, um, or I can't wait to do this. And just knowing that that would like reinforce so many of the things that I wanted them to get better at. That's not dissimilar from, you know, the, the joy that makes the college swimming experience fun too, is when they feel that agency and power and they feel respected to do the things that they want to get better at too. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Amherst swimming program at? Yeah. So, um, so are we, our Amherst swim program uh, is at Amherst swim on Instagram. Um, that's kind of our more dominant social media uh, and at Amherst dive. Uh, if they're looking for the diving program um, 
I'm uh, my social media is at con bolio. Uh, so C O N N B E A U L I E U. Uh, that's my personal uh, during the summer. It's mostly just pictures of my dog and my hiking, but in the, in the season, I try to post more videos and, and things of sets and things that we're doing and practices. Thank you again, Coach Connor Bolio, for your interview and best luck in your future at Amherst as the head swimming coach. Appreciate it, Brandon. Thank you for your time. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Connor, for your interview and best luck in your future. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.